guys, I'm here today to talk to you about statistical process control and specifically how you can use statistic process, statistical process control or uh, control charts within Tableau to start understanding your data better. Before we dive into Tableau, I wanted to kind of just briefly pause and foundationalize us in what statistical process control is. So directly from the Wikipedia page, statistical process control is a method of quality control which uses statistical methods. When we say statistical methods in general, we mean things like the average, the mean, and the standard deviation. Uh, one thing to kind of know about statistical process control is that it was really bred out of the manufacturing industry. So if you can imagine that you work in some sort of manufacturing plant and maybe you fabricate screws of a specific length and you know what that known length is. And even more than that, maybe you have a very narrow range of acceptable values you'll take for that screw. And anytime it goes beyond those values or maybe something starts to go funky, that's a, a signal to you that you might need to recalibrate your um, fabrication machines. The key with statistical process control and control charts is there's an emphasis on early detection. So what can we see within our data that we're consistently measuring that might give us a leg up, might be an indicator, a warning sign that we need to, like I said, recalibrate or maybe understand what's going on at a little bit deeper of a level. One thing that's kind of important to note or one thing that I'll kind of say is that uh, statistical process control and control charts in general aren't necessarily limited to manufacturing. I think that you could broadly say there's good application when you have kind of that data set that I described. You have some sort of measure, some sort of metric of value that has like a target and a, and a pretty narrow range where you have an expected result and when things are different from that expectation, it could be worrisome. Okay. So let's dive into Tableau. The data set that I'm going to be working with is just the my total daily caloric intake to get you um, accustomed to the data set that we're looking at. I will tell you up front that the y-axis is truncated. It starts at about 850 kilocalories or calories and goes up to a little bit more than 2200. That's because for me what's important is the fluctuation, the variance between the different days. If we talk about statistics in general, there are some things that we could do to start understanding the data even more than just having a run chart of my calories over time. And let's go ahead and do that now. So let's add just a quick um, average line. Again, I said before, this is for something that's well controlled that there's like an expected range. So I like to keep my daily calories between sort of that 1550 to maybe 1650 mark, maybe more to, more around the 1600 mark on a daily basis. I have a target that I'm consistently trying to achieve. Okay, so the next thing we kind of think about when we talk about statistics is normal distribution. A great place to start in Tableau would be with reference lines or distribution bands to start using some of the statistical tools that they already have available. Let's also do that. So. Starting off, let's add a distribution band to this as well, and let's go ahead and do the plus or minus 3SD. And the reason why we're going to do that is because if we think about that uh, normal distribution, that 68, 95, 99% rule, we know if our data is normally distributed, that 68% is within 1SD, 95% within 2, and 99.7. So pretty much virtually all of our data should be within that 3SD range. So very quickly we can see, looking at my daily calories, that there are certainly days that are well beyond that 3SD um, distribution band. So this is a great way to add quick insight to my data, but I kind of mentioned early on that I want to be able to detect and have early kind of warning signs of what's going on. And right now I'm getting a sense of where things were out of control, but it's not really pointing me down the path. So what we can do instead is we can actually um, make some of these uh, test rules. And kind of jumping back to statistical process control, there's actually a couple different sets of rules that you can use in combination with one another to start understanding and recognizing if your data is non-normal, if there's some sort of uniqueness, maybe there's some uh, trend that's starting to appear. What I'm going to be demoing for you today are Western electric rules. There's also Nelson rules. There's eight Nelson rules. There's four Western electric rules. And I'll kind of read here again. The Western electric rules are decision rules for detecting out of control or non-random conditions on control charts. And even again down here, you can see other unnatural patterns, maybe repetition or trend patterns. 
Let's look at this a little bit more in detail. So here are the Western Electric rules. Let's focus right here on this center chart and see what we got going on. So this all hinges around what it's called, it's called the center line. For the sake of our data and the rest of this tutorial, I'm probably gonna refer to it as the average or the mean. You've got three zones going on. You've got zone C, which is one SD to the mean. Then you have zone B that's plus or minus two SD to the mean, or really that in between space between the green and the blue dotted line. And then you have that zone A that's plus or minus three SD. When you get plus three SD, you're beyond what they call the upper control limit. And when you're below minus three SD, you're at that lower control limit. So again, if you kind of thought about it, that's where things are really out of control. And again, and the idea with um, statistical process control and these rules is like we've talked about a couple times, it's to detect when things are maybe getting out of control. So rule one is exactly what we set up with our distribution band. It's any single data point that falls outside the three SD limit from the center line, or again, the average. So let's go ahead and instead of using my um, distribution bands, let's actually create a calculated field. And as I go through this tutorial, I'm not going to keystroke for keystroke type out the calculations because some of them are quite lengthy. Instead, I'm gonna walk you through the logic of them. This workbook will be available on my Tableau Public Profile for you to dig into the nitty gritty details and emulate what it is I have going on. One kind of uh, side tip or note as we do this, you'll notice that this is called total daily calories. That's my data point and I've pre-aggregated it as its own calculated field, just so that I don't have to tack on the sum to my first value, which is just my calories. Instead, I've just created another calculated field, so it makes it a little bit easier for me as I'm walking through these calculations. Okay, so here's test one. Again, it's any data point that's plus or minus 3SD from the average. If we look at this, I've kind of taken it and tweaked it a little bit. And that's just to take this inequality, this expression that we've got going on and make it a little bit more compact. What I've done is I've taken what we traditionally have would be the window average plus three times the window SD. And I've moved my window average to the left side of my inequality. And then I've wrapped my total daily calories minus my window average, the total average daily calories in the absolute value. So this truly is just comparing the difference between whatever my current day total daily calories is to that overall average that's in the view and logically saying is it is that number more or less than three times the standard deviation for the same data set. And if that is the case, then we're going to display the total daily calories. Otherwise, we're gonna display null. And the, the purpose here is that we get that plus and minus all in one expression. So once we've got that down, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it onto my row shelf and we're gonna get another chart immediately. I've done some pre-formatting on this, so mine showed up as circles. Yours might come on as a as line or something else, but feel free to change it. Immediately, we're gonna go ahead and make it a dual axis chart. And then we will always synchronize our axis and we can go ahead and hide that header. I'm gonna make the size of my marks a little bit bigger so we can see them very clearly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the labels to our marks. And here we're getting to kind of what I was hinting at earlier. We now have our warning, our detectors. Our eyes are now narrowed in. They're focusing in on these five data points that are in the view. If we took that away, we would be able to count them, but now we've really extracted the necessity that kind of brain computation that's required for us to find those points that are our early warning signs, so to speak. So you're probably already thinking, yeah, that's great, and I want to use all of the different rules. So what that's going to come down to is probably what you've guessed is leveraging a parameter. And I've got it set up right now. I've got three different tests here. So let's take a look at rule number two and walk through that same logic. So rule number two is kind of fun. Two out of three consecutive points or observations fall beyond the two SD limit on the same side of the center line. And I love these visual examples because it very clearly displays what's going on. In our first scenario, we're above the center line. If we were to look at the red dot and two points back, that's our three consecutive points. And actually our 
most current guy, he's fine. He's within range, but his two friends from before, they're both above that 2SD line. Because they're both above the 2SD line in uh, consecutive alignment, we're going to mark this guy as, an, as a warning. And also, similarly, it doesn't have to be in a row. If we look back at our three data points, my most current guy, he's 2SD beneath. The one before him isn't, but that uh, second guy back, he is, so we would mark that point as well. Okay, here is what the calculation looks like, and I will tell you that I did bundle this all together for simplicity, but some of you might be kind of concerned with how much text we have going on. I would tell you, feel free to break this up into multiple calculations. If you look at this in more depth, there's really the same set of logic repeated twice. At the top here, we're testing if the current point and one of the two previous points is above that 2SD, and then we have the below, because the key to this was it needs to be on the same side of the center line, so that it really does matter if it's plus or minus the 2SD. Okay, looking into the specific logic for the, what I would call half of the test, we've got if my current value, my current total daily calories is greater than the window average total daily calories plus two times the window standard deviation and, and notice now I've got this all in parentheses, so this is um, resolving in, you know, as sort of like a sub logical statement here. So we're gonna look now deeper. So we're gonna say look up the total daily calories minus one. So we're going back, we're going left, we're going back in time, but we're looking at the same thing. The day before, is it greater than the window average plus two times the SD? Or if the one before that, two back in positioning is greater than. If one of these is true and the first, and my current guy is also two above that S, you know, two SD above the average, this is going to resolve to true. Or it could be the case that just my two predecessors, negative one and negative two there, the two previous guys, they're both 2SD above. In that case, we also want to you know, consider this true. And when this um, entire expression, this entire logical statement resolves to true, then we want to display the total daily calories. Otherwise, else, going all the way down to the bottom, it's going to be null. And so we just repeat that same logic for the below 2SD noting here that we now have the less than and the negative two, but everything else is exactly the same. So we've bundled it together to say, when it meets the conditions of test two, go ahead and display the value, otherwise it's going to be null. And let's look at our parameter. We've got it here. I've set it up as a string, a list of strings with three values, test one, test two, and test three. We all know that a parameter by itself doesn't do anything, so the next step would be to create a calculated field that uses the parameter. So here it is, selected control test. It's a case statement. When the parameter is set to test one, then control chart test one. When test two, then it's test two. When test three, then test three. You get the idea. What we're gonna do is we would drag this out onto the row shelf, which I've already done, and we're gonna set it up the exact same way. It's gonna be a dual axis. We're gonna set it to a circle. We're gonna make the dot a little bit larger, and we'll add the marks for emphasis. And here's what test two would look like. And then finally, we'll look at test three. I encourage you to, to look at test or rule number four on your own and play around with it because it's really kind of fun. So rule three, and, and it gets a little hairy here because um, we're talking about consecutive order um, points and we're talking about up to five, so four out of five. So the rule is four out of five consecutive points fall beyond the one SD limit on the same side of the center line or again, the average. And you can see clearly again, the four out of five above that green dotted line are right here, so we mark the point. Same thing, these four out of the five are below, so we're gonna mark the point. Now, how I've set this up is kind of unique. I've got a folder here that's got all these different marks. I'm gonna show you the first one and walk through the logic. It's very straightforward. So if my current total daily calories is less than the window average minus the SD, then I want that to be one, else make it zero, end. Very simple. We're gonna repeat that for each of those look back marks. And it's going to also be repeated for the above the center line as well. So here is the look back. And again, we're below that SD at this point. So we just add the look up, we do the negative one. There's a lot of, you know, duplicate your calculated field, 
do some renaming on the field convention to get it up and running, but it's really straightforward. And once you have all of those set up, and I'll show you the zero plus just to see the difference. We've got our inequality going the other way and we've got our plus. Once we've got that set up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that then one else zero and we're gonna add it up. So here's kind of the second layer of test three. So if control chart test three mark zero on the below the center line plus mark one, mark two, mark three, mark four, if the sum of those is greater than or equal to four, then display the total daily calories. And then again, we're repeating that kind of same idea, but now above that center line in that one SD mark. If the sum of those is greater than or equal to four, then display the total daily calories. Otherwise, we don't really care about it. And that's the last one that gets added into our test. Okay. So let's take a look at test three now and see what we got going on. So pretty interesting stuff. I would say some polishing steps that I would recommend doing is I made this test tooltip calculated field that just has some nice flavor text to let the user know what's going on. So really calling out warning, this observation is three standard deviations from the mean and the same thing for each of the subsequent tests. And I also made it such that now that will only show when my selected control test is not equal to null. So if it's equal to null, if it's null, it's going to display nothing. Otherwise, let's display that test tooltip. And that's what's driving um, what I have in my tooltip. I'll show you here. So on May 30th, 2016, that might be a cause for concern. Four out of five consecutive observations are one standard deviation away from the mean on the same side. When I was playing around with this, I actually liked test three the best because I think it kind of pointed out where there might be patterns where I was going the wrong way. So this looks like a pattern where I wasn't necessarily getting the normal amount of calories that I wanted and I was on the low end. And this was maybe two kind of streaks or trends where maybe I was consuming too many calories on a daily basis. I love this idea of putting the different uh, statistical uh, process or control charts tests all in a parameter and letting your users have flexibility in choosing because quite often we want to test our data in different ways to see what's going on. So this is kind of nice. We can say, okay, and this is where things were really wonky with your diet. You know, not too many one-offs. This one is kind of funny. This is the day after Thanksgiving, which would make sense. Had a lot of leftovers. Test two, maybe, you know, these are kind of funky slight patterns, but test three, I think for me is really nice to see where I got into maybe starting to trend on a bad term. So you can imagine as, as more data gets plotted, it'd be really nice to see these warning signs as you're going along. All right, kind of wrapping it up. That's all I have. Like I said, I'm going to post this onto Tableau Public and please feel free to reach out to me with any thoughts.